Legend of the War here, and today we've got a Saving Your Disaster battle playing as Nagarond going up against the Fane Enchantress here. We've got a a Shade Greatsword kind of doom stack in the makings of here. It's pretty good. There's some definite problems in, in it, but I'll get to that in a minute. But we're going up against a 75% heavy cavalry army, which is probably like one of the, the things that the Shade Greatsword army is going to struggle against the most. Uh, comparing the Shade Greatsword to Sisters of Avalon, which is like their high elf counterpart, it, the Shades don't do very well at dealing with cavalry in melee, whereas Sisters of Avalon can pretty much eat an entire cavalry charge and more or less brush it aside because they've got way higher melee defense and I guess a lot of charge resistance, at least it seems. Uh, Shades, however, they are a lot squishier, even though they they kind of do more missile damage than sisters. Um, this is the one area where they're really not going to fare that well. So we have to make sure that they're firing and not getting into melee. Uh, we don't have a lot of crowd control here. It's going to be very difficult to stop them from flanking us, but that's what we have to do. Um, and then there's also the manticores. So the manticores are the biggest problem in this army. And the one thing that stops this from being an actual doom stack. Um, manticores would be fine if it wasn't for one thing. Rampage. As a general rule of thumb, I really try to avoid recruiting any units with the Rampage trait. Um, so, for example, in the Lizard Men, there's one particular notab notable unit, which is very strong, but I never recruit them in my campaign because they go on Rampage, and that's Feral Carnosaurs. Don't get me wrong, I love Carnosaurs as a mount option because they don't be they don't get Rampage, but any unit that gets Rampage, the problem with that is that Rampage can happen randomly and very early, and once it's gone into Rampage, especially with this particular scenario here, because we can't take them out of it with um, with Cold-Blooded, um, you can't control it anymore, and it'll fight anything, making it a tactically worthless unit. So in this situation here, where there's a lot of anti-large cavalry, having these single-entity large units go in and fighting you know, it's Grail Knights and Knights of the Realm or whatever, it's not good. They really shouldn't be doing that. And also, we won't be able to pull them out when they're taking too much damage. So, a little bit of context on this battle as well. I think that's important because the Bounce of Power there actually is a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Uh, the guy in this email said that he tried this battle three times and he couldn't win it. And that he tried to order resolve the battle and actually won the battle in order resolve, which is strange because the order resolver said he would lose uh, based on what I saw. Uh, but apparently he took such massive casualties, they just basically didn't want to accept it, hence why I've got it. So, what I want to do here is win the battle and only lose the manticores, if anything. I mean, I'm not going to try to lose the manticores, but I'm also not going to try to protect them, because just you should recruit a different unit. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, so in Black Ark battles, generally speaking, the enemy deploy over here, like 99% of the time, that's where they always deploy. So, we could deploy over here, but we want them to take as long as possible to get to us, and also put an obstruction in their way, because what they'll tend to do, because the AI is not very good at pathfinding, is that they'll crowd all of their units around through here when they're trying to come at us, which will allow us to bomb the entire area and dish out more damage. I suspect that the guy actually deployed over here, which allowed them an easy access right into their forces. So, this here will give us a relatively flat playing field. Um, go as tight as possible here, I think. And I think I'll check a board. He's got an uneven number of uh, shades. Okay, that looks pretty good. Get him back just a bit. Okay, i uh, actually put this one over here. Because I have a feeling they're going to attack us harder over here than over this way. I'll just leave one Black Guard of Nagaron there, over here and here. Keep the Feral Manticles back there, just for the beginning. Because we don't want to put them up front over here. Like, what I've done with Feral Manticles before, and this is it's always pisses me off so much. I'm like, about to go and harass... The enemy, right? Because that's what I usually use with my single entity flying dudes. I want to go harass them. If they've got any missile units, I'll go over there and try to waste their ammo, that kind of stuff. So I'll fly it over here, and then it will immediately go rampage, land, and get fucking wiped out. So we have to keep them in reserve. I don't mind them getting into melee, but just wait until they get over here first. So they can, at least we can try to have them pick a somewhat favorable 
engagement, which they won't get. But yeah, if they get killed, you know, like I said, replace them. Don't recruit rampage units as a general rule of thumb. With the look, you can't. With the exception being um, Saurus warriors and um, what's it called, carnosaurs. You can recruit carnosaurs. I personally don't. I prefer Stegodons, because Stegodons don't go Rampage. But this isn't a, a uh, listen mid video, so let's not worry about that right now. But I really... Rampage is a very, very bad trait. Very bad for you. And we just clipped them with that. Alright, so here's what I was kind of talking about. This is awesome. If they can send in their Pegasus Knights right away and fight him, that's... That's really good. They are massively dicking around, which is what I wanted. Thanks to the obstruction. Alright, one load of Pegasus Knights gone. Alright, I need to lure some more of these guys over here. This one here is unlikely to go into Rampage. Thing is with these, I can't cast them all at the same time. We have to wait for them to cast one at a time. Otherwise, it'll just cancel them. Alright, just get back. Ideally, want them to target the enemy, uh, the Lord. Doesn't seem like that's what they want to do at the moment. Yep, there they go, good. Because they just don't do much damage to him and he's unbreakable anyway. And immortal. Whereas if they charge at the melee infantry, we'll do a lot of friendly fire. So they're, they're just gone as now. Good start. Alright, that brings them down to 18. Hmm. They're starting to get organized. Alright, focus on these guys over here. Yep, keep it on that stance. If we can get rid of, say, 60% of their forces, it'd be okay if uh, they go into melee after that. Let's bring them in a little bit closer. Alright, we're going to need to use these guys now as a bit of crowd control, because like I said, oh shit, um, it doesn't matter if they get killed. That's it. And the Crown of Command does not affect it, because it's not a leadership problem with Rampage. Good, that's it. The great thing about single entity crowd control is that they don't really stop your missile units from shooting. Alright, there they go. Rampage. Cool, whatever. Let them do as much crowd control as possible. Our Black Guard of Nagaron should be able to handle those Knights Errant, no problem. All of our guys are... Why aren't they shooting? It's good, they've still got tons of units lagging behind as well. Ugh, hate that. So what's this one? Knight Errant. Taking a fair bit of damage there, not as much as I thought though. Don't worry if any- yep, one Manticore is dead, don't worry about that. Keep him in there, he's- those single entity dudes like that, like him, are really good at tanking. Alright, time to start using this. I find they're much better anti-infantry than anti-large units. The fact they came out of some waves really helped us. Alright, most of their cavalry is gone now, and we've barely taken any, any like, important damage. Obviously, 
We've taken some damage, but it's unimportant damage. And there's the army losses. Cool. This guy here did such a good job of tanking. I don't think we're going to be able to finish off the Fey Enchantress there. But... You'll have no problem taking them out next turn, because all that's left is their infantry. That's it. In fact, can we possibly get the Shades to run after them? Because their speed's... For yeah. Like, way faster. Yeah, I can't control him, so he's not going to be able to do it. Might be able to get a few extra shots in. Just to thin them out a bit. Which will also mean more captives. Get this fucking prick out of there. Can't control him. I can't give him any commands. Eh, this is in our way. Just shoot at them. Just If we can get a couple of kills, great. Alright. I think the only reason it was considered a close victory is because of the manticores. But, you know, they did tank it a little bit, so I've got to give them that credit. But yeah, you should do yourself a favor and get rid of them. Get get some black, more Blackguard of Nagarond or some more Shades. They would have done a better job. You know, having a Blackguard of Nagarond tanking instead of the the uh, the, uh, the Feral Manticore would have been better. So yeah, only the infantry remain and uh, the Fey Enchantress. And yeah, get them slaves and replenish because you're doing fine for money. And let's have a look how the rest of the campaign's going. So you got a decent amount of territory. I did notice it's like turn 270, so it's pretty late. But the health of your campaign seems like it's fine. I mean, you make an absolute bank. <sighs> I've always got to make these damn decisions for people. Um, you know, reducing upkeep costs for all your units. What else is there? Because that's a trait that'll be provided for the dude. It'll save a bit of cash. Yeah, so it won't take you too long to replace those dudes with something else. I, I would disband it, but I'll let you make that decision. I'm not. I'm trying to be less of a dick these days, and uh, not going to make those kind of decisions for you. You know, if you wanted to have those manticles for flavor reasons, and that's entirely up to you. So the order tide seems to have formed. Your strength rankings one. Uh, how is everyone else's strength? Um, Krasa Karak is the next closest. 84 settlements. Holy crap. But I never really found the dwarves to be particularly difficult to deal with as the Dark Elves because, honestly, shades rip them to shreds just because of how much armor-piercing missile damage they do, and you can stalk. So their artillery can't really hit you until you get within range of them anyway. Um, but everything else looks pretty good. Oh, God. Anyway, guys, that's the end of this one. Appreciate all your support. Don't forget to hit that sub button, and I'll see you next time. And don't recruit any Rampage units. Later, fuckers.